There's three primary focuses when we grow plants that we focus on, other than the right plant in the right zone. There's the physical component. There's the biological component. And then there's the chemical component, or the chemistry. Let me start with the physical component. That's the type of soil you have, whether it's sand, silt, clay, sandy clay loam. But what's more important than just the type of soil that you have, what kind of structure does that soil have? Is it a compacted soil? Or a collapsed soil? Or is it a soil that's aggregated? So what do I mean by that? Clay particles are the tiniest particles in a soil. And sand particles are the largest. Okay? Sand particles are fairly large particles, obviously not this large, but they're large particles. But clay particles are tiny and they stack on top of each other like dominoes and side by side. They're so tightly bound. So compost is the food source that feeds the soil food web. So let me back up and tell you the soil food web a little more explicitly and then I'll come back. So one part of the pie of the soil food web are all the microorganisms. These are all the organisms we cannot see without a microscope. Bacteria, fungi, nematodes, microarthropods, all microscopic organisms, and there are billions of them in a handful of soil. Some of the bacteria and fungi are beneficial, some are disease-causing pathogens. We want to suppress the disease-causing pathogens and build the beneficial organisms. Right? Makes perfect sense. So that's one half of the pie. The other half of the pie are all the macroorganisms. These are all the organisms we see through the soil profile when we're working in the garden. They're larger. We can see these organisms. They're drugs. They're sentients. They're earthworms. They're wireworms. They're the moles, the voles, and the gophers. Think of the soil food web as a, as a food chain from the tiniest organism in the soil to the largest organism, and they're all breaking organic matter down at, any, at various stages. Now bacteria, they're cannibalizing each other. They're all fighting for the food that's in the food in the soil system, the compost that you have, the organic fertilizers. That's their food source. That's what sustains them. After adding organic matter into the soil, after about six months or maybe eight months, you're back down to the mineral base of the soil, whether it's sand, silt, or clay. Now, in a sandy soil, organic matter goes away a lot faster. Why? There's more oxygen in that soil, right? And water washes through that soil very, very easily. What else washes through the soil easily if there's not a lot of organic matter in it? Nutrients. So what binds mineral particles of soil together? Compost and these bacteria and fungi, some of the, it's all about the enzymatic activity. It's all about the end byproducts that are produced from these bacteria and these fungi breaking the compost down. They secrete glues that bind the mineral particles of soil together to go to create an aggregated soil from a collapsed or compacted soil. So with clay, even though you might think a clay soil is a difficult soil to work, which it can be, because it's so tightly bound, we have to really get in there and work that soil to create an aggregated soil. It's from the compost that you're adding. The compost is the lifeblood of that soil that will take a flat, tightly bound clay soil and create it into an aggregated soil. But it takes time, doesn't it? It doesn't happen overnight. Now, in that sandy soil, where the particles are a lot larger, and there is more oxygen, which means the organic matter goes away faster, and the nutrients wash through the soil faster, it means you have to incorporate more, more organic matter into that type of soil. Why? It's the only thing that binds the particles together to make an aggregated soil. And that is what holds nutrients in the soil. So let's go back to this physical, biological, and the chemical part of gardening. If we focus on the biology, the soil food web, by feeding it compost and using organic fertilizers, we impact the physical component of the soil and the chemical component of the soil. What do I mean by that? All those glues. 
bind mineral particles of soil together to create airways in the soil, pathways for oxygen to travel through the soil. It means roots can grow through the soil much easier. Water goes through that soil much easier. What makes the soil a living, breathing soil is the biology. But it must have good structure so that there's oxygen in the soil. Without oxygen, the biology doesn't live well. These beneficial living organisms are aerobic, just like we are. They require oxygen. The disease-causing pathogens are anaerobic. Think about an area in your soil where water settles, and what we know that the only thing that's really going to survive in a waterlogged soil is some kind of a disease-causing pathogen. It's not going to be one of the good guys in the soil. So soils must have oxygen in order to allow that living fraction of the soil to survive. The other thing that those glues do is they affect the chemistry, how they hold the nutrients in place. They don't allow the nutrients to wash through the soil. Does this make sense? It's all about the biology. And we've gone from artificial feeding to the chemical world, now to understanding the biological world. The term probiotic means to encourage life. We know, we're more familiar with antibiotics, aren't we? When we take an antibiotic, and an antibiotic is to discourage life or to kill life off. When we take an antibiotic, we hope it's going to kill whatever makes us sick. But we know it kills the beneficial microflora in our system, right? So usually the women in our life, our grandmothers or our mothers or your wife or your girlfriend says, you know, if you are taking antibiotics, you need to build the microflora back up in your system. I have a friend that is going through chemotherapy right now. She drinks the kefir every day, at least twice a day. Why? Because without the beneficial microflora in our system, we cannot digest the food that we eat effectively. We also cannot absorb those nutrients effectively. Our immune system is tied to our digestive tract. If we do not break our food down efficiently, we're not going to get those nutrients. We're also not going to eliminate effectively. And we all need to be regular, right? This is very important. A lot of people that have soy in their diet, soy is, or tofu, that's a biologically active food or miso, right? Miso soup, miso, or like sauerkraut, some of these things that have fermented foods. That's really good for building the biology back in our system. So when I look at the American diet, and I have a hamburger, french fries, a candy bar, and a soda, that's why I look at the chemical fertilizer world. It's going to fat, the chemical fertilizer materials fatten up the crop, right? Well, so does the American diet. We know if we have that diet, lots of sugar, enriched white flour, we know we're going to fatten up. We also will not have the same ability to fight off illness and disease as we do with the plant-based diet. Fruits, vegetables, berries, where we get our anti antioxidants, blueberries, raspberries, nuts, whole grains, fish, where we get our omegas. When we eat that kind of a diet, not only do we not fatten up as much, we have the ability to fight off illness and disease, which was very much the same in the world. One was an artificial feed, one now is more of a sustainable feed.